Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to use alcohol inks in my Bible journaling. Yes, alcohol inks. And I'm going to be journaling in Jonah chapter 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. And this is the beginning of my pastor's new series. He's going to be preaching through Jonah. And I'm going to tell you what I'm doing to get started, and then I'll give you a little snippet of what was in his sermon. I'm using some of the vellum that I have talked about before. I use this instead of tracing paper. It's a little bit heavier. And with alcohol inks, you can just squeeze them out onto this vellum and do some kind of cool things with them. Now, I have an alcohol ink class over on my website that's more fine art type stuff. You need a lot of supplies and blowy tools and all sorts of stuff. But for what we're doing here, this is really simple because these alcohol ink bottles, you can buy them in all different colors. So you can just pick out one or two to try it and get some alcohol, isopropyl alcohol which I know right now during the pandemic is not as ubiquitous as normal, but you put some of that on here with just some swooshed on color and that will act as the agent to move this color across the piece of paper. It is so cool. This doesn't work with watercolor. I've had people ask me if alcohol inks will work on any kind of Bible journaling thing and I finally figured out this paper would. I mean, you could use Yupo and other fancy papers, but this is nice and cheap. You might be able to get away with it on tracing paper, but tracing paper is just not heavy enough for me to feel like I'm getting something beefy. Like I'd, I'd be worried I would rip it. But I, I'm just going to add some more of the alcohol to just keep it moving and lift the piece of paper and move it around. So fun to play with these and just watch the color move all over the place. And I'm not trying to do any particular pattern. I wanted something relatively smooth and I will add a little bit more color to it as I go. But it was just kind of fun to play around with letting the colors do what they want. And one of the reasons that I thought to do this was when I was picturing in my mind what to do with this particular background that I was making, I realized what my pastor was preaching would be perfect on this because I wanted to do a page about what he talked about anyway about Jonah, because I was intrigued to go and look at the map of where it was that Jonah went from and to. And you'll see in the map that I'll, I'll be working on later. One of the things my pastor was really talking about was running away from the Lord. The Lord tells you to do something, you run the opposite direction. And on the map, you actually see that it's the entire total opposite direction. And how many times do we do that? God asks us to do something. He asks us to talk to somebody, to forgive somebody, to serve somebody. And what do we do? We look for every excuse in the world not to. I'm not going to say everybody does it. I should probably say just I have done that before. I am, you know, not always as quick to obey as I would like to be. And Jonah is a really good reminder of that principle. So I added some more color to this, swooshing it around a little bit more. And while it looks like it's all really wet, it's going to dry fairly quickly. I'm going to use something to activate the drying a little bit further in just a minute. But you can just let this air dry and it should be just fine. And I'm just bending the paper, letting the color run all the way down. The thing that's on the surface of my table underneath of here is actually freezer paper, the shiny side of freezer paper, because you can just take some alcohol and wipe that off and then do another project. So if you get hooked on alcohol inks like I have been, then you'll know what you can use. Just cover your table with that because this stuff can be messy. And now I'm going to tape it down to something because I wanted to be able to kind of flatten it out. It was starting to collect all that water, or water, it's alcohol, the puddle in the center. And I wanted to get rid of that puddle, but I wanted to just let it sit and dry. So I taped it down and I kind of pulled it taut a little bit with the tape on all sides so that it would be a little flat. And then I held it at an angle to try to get that center portion to just move out of the way. I just didn't want a big old puddle there. And with alcohol inks, 
the more you get a little tiny collection with a lot of ink in it, it'll get sticky. And that way, like the smoother you can get it and the thinner of a, a really nice smooth coat, the less you'll have to deal with any of that sticky stuff. And I'll show you a tip for fixing that anyway. But this worked pretty well to tape it down, aside from the fact that the side at the top was curling. So I tried taping it down, but with the alcohol moisture on there, the tape didn't stay very well. It didn't do very much. So I was trying to figure out how to handle that. And I thought, well, what if I taped the two corners, but make sure the tape hits the empty part of the paper. So if you want to do this, I recommend leaving some empty parts of the paper that you can tape something to and be able to uh, hold your paper down so it doesn't get all buckly and that sort of thing. So I've got some really fun things going on. There's a few places that are still damp and I can see that when I look at an angle at it, but I'm also going to get out something else to dry this. And you could do this with a hair dryer on very, very light, very cool temperature, or what I'm gonna use is an airbrush. And this is connected on the ground, on the floor beside me, to an air compressor. And that's why I said this is something that if you really get into it, you can buy all kinds of equipment and everything. It's a little crazy. I will link you in the doobly-doo to a video all about alcohol inks and the tools that you can use to blow them. I'm just doing this air blowing so that it will dry faster. That's the only reason why. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be just fine if you let it air dry. Don't worry about it. But if you do want to try to dry it quicker, which like it's five minutes of drying, it's not long at all, then you could use a hair dryer on cool setting because you don't want to make the paper buckle any more than it's already going to buckle just by the nature of having this alcohol on it. But you see that little spot down there and there's a few other spots on here. It's a little bit tacky. Even though it's dry, it those places where it collects a lot of pigment end up a little bit tacky. And what I have found is that I can use a powder tool that I normally use for embossing. And if you don't have an a powder tool you can very easily just get a little bit of baby powder and a little fine brush and just paint a little bit of the baby powder on top of any areas that are sticky so you can kind of see there's little lines here and there and I'm just going to go over this with the, the powder that's in there and that's really all it is is basically a, a talc kind of powder of some sort and I'm just going to go over it, those little spots now I'm going to be trimming this down to fit in my Bible so I don't need to worry about it too much, but if you end up with any spots in the middle, that would be how you can make them unsticky. And then wipe it off gently with a Kleenex, and that will take the dust off, but then those spots are no longer tacky. So it makes it easier to work with. So now I'm going to remove all my tape and trim this down so it's going to fit in my Bible. And you'll be able to measure your Bible and see exactly where it's going to fit and everything. I drew a line on this printout that I have created that will be a download that you can uh, you can get in the doobly-doo. There's going to be a link to the graphic and it's basically some words and a map and it says on it when all else fails and you've been swallowed by a whale follow directions and maybe follow directions first. Signed Jonah. <laughs> And the little dot that I'm drawing my red line to on the right, all the way over to Tarshish, you see how far that is? This little dotted line is where God told him to go. He told him, let's just go right over there. And he didn't want to go there because he knew that God was going to extend mercy and grace. And he didn't want them to get mercy and grace. He wanted them to fry. And he didn't want to be part of that. So he went all the way across the Mediterranean. And that was a little bit excessive in the running away from God, but it is a lesson to us not to do the same. So to make this a tip in, I put some double stick tape on the end that tucks into the crease of my Bible, lined it up on the outside edge, and then pressed it down. And voila, it's done. And since I had already done the whale's tail on that page of Jonah 1, this allowed me to put another page in there. And I did slip a piece of white paper in there so I could take a picture of it. But this is a way that you can add another journaling to the same page. If you've already journaled something, you can certainly do that in your Bible. Add a tip in, either on this kind of thin paper, this thin tracing paper, or you can do it on a piece of Toma River paper or that kind of thing, or even just copier paper. 
whatever you want to insert in there, you can do that. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you liked it, click the like button, and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye.